Hi there, Dr. Tanzavati here. Welcome to Tanzavati Cosmetic and Reconstructive Surgery. I hope this information serves you well to prepare you for any upcoming injection. So in particular, what I'd like to emphasize today is how to prepare before you come in for any Botox injection or filler injection. The most important process through all this is avoiding blood thinners. When you do take ibuprofen or aspirin before your injection, you are asking for a potential bruise to happen. Before you schedule your appointment, put on your calendar a reminder. Five days before, it says stop any ibuprofen, avoid ibuprofen. And 10 days before, stop aspirin. Okay, so those are key ingredients. Now, the other thing that you want to know is any other blood thinners like warfarin, coumadin, over-the-counter vitamins and medications. Um, the biggest culprits are vitamin E, fish oil, I take that myself, turmeric, your multivitamin, ginger, ginkgo, and ginger is in a lot of drinks, so in particular, kombucha. And I have patients who will drink lots of kombucha and they don't realize that they drink a lot of ginger and that will cause the bleeding as well. So all of those are very big culprits, but you want to also check a list of the most common blood thinners that are out there. We provide one at our office and you can probably check our resources tab and you can find that information on our website. But if you can't, just Google common blood thinners and see if anything that you're taking is on that list because you'll want to avoid it at least 10 days prior to your injection. The other thing you're going to want to do is to take Arnica and bromelain before your injection. Now this is not mandatory but it is highly recommended and Arnica is a great agent to diminish the chance of bruising and bromelain also helps with bruising and swelling. Uh, both of these can be found at your local store. It would be either Sprouts that we have here, CVS, any pharmacies will carry these as well as your grocery stores. And follow the instructions that are on the bottle. For Arnica, try to find the 30X type of pills. They do have 6X as well, but the 30X is the preferred method. And you want to take Arnica and bromelain separately. Don't take the bottles that have Arnica and bromelain together because they should actually be taken separately because they can affect each other's potency. So with the Arnica, take the 30X, three pills, three times a day, three days before your injection. Drink lots of water before your injection. Um, that will help you to heal after your injection. You wanna avoid alcohol intake because if you're dehydrated and the alcohol increases the blood flow to the surface of the skin, it can increase your risk of bleeding and bruising. Next thing is to plan your workout. Know that Botox injections, you know, you wanna avoid any workout right after the injection. So plan accordingly. If you work out in the morning, then come to your injection after. Or if you work out in the afternoon, avoid that workout the day you come in and plan for it the next day. Plan your flight schedule too. I do wanna emphasize if you are traveling more, you wanna avoid flying a few days right after your injection, particularly after a filler injection and specifically for lip filler injections. If you don't heed my warning, if you fly the next day, you'll find that your lips will swell on the plane. So plan your flight accordingly. Um, book your appointment a few days before your flight. The last part that I wanna do to uh, emphasize to prepare for your injection is to avoid any big events. That is just like if I'm having a surgical patient, we don't want them uh, scheduling a sort of like wedding, going to a wedding party or their own wedding two weeks before, that, that's just not enough time. Same thing when it comes to an injection. You can't plan for these events accordingly and there's this Murphy's Law, I don't know if you've heard of it before, but if you don't plan for it, it will happen. So if you don't plan for the possibility of having bruising and swelling, it will happen right before your event and you won't be prepared enough to allow all that bruising and swelling to go away before your event. So my rule of thumb is to give yourself 
particularly for a big event, at least a month before your event, preferably more like six weeks. So that's all of the things to prepare you for the injection. Now let's talk about what you can do after the injection to kind of speed up the healing and to look your best. First thing is to avoid exercising. We already talked about this before, but plan your exercise accordingly. And afterwards, you're gonna avoid exercise for 24 hours after your Botox or your filler injection. The second thing to help with the swelling is to use ice packs. Now, I do say ice packs, but I do want you to know that you shouldn't put it in the freezer. We would prefer 50 degrees, which is roughly about refrigerator temperature. You don't want it too cold because right after your injection, it may feel still numb from the lidocaine. Any, if you use any topical lidocaine or if the injector had lidocaine in the um, injection itself, which is very common. So if that's the case, you may not feel your lips, you may not feel your cheeks or wherever the injection was. So you want to avoid using ice packs that are too cold because you might not feel it initially right on the surface of the skin and you can cause a freezer burn and more trauma. You want to avoid massaging the area. So gentle massage is okay. Sometimes patients have a little uh, bumps or lumps. That is usually from the bruising and not from the filler. So you wanna avoid massaging too heavily, uh, particularly the lips, people wanna massage it heavily and that can migrate the filler to an area you don't want it to be in. So avoid doing that. The injector has likely injected in the right location and so you don't wanna move it to another area then create a lump that you don't want. The other thing that can help with swelling is to raise your head at night. So after you ice through the day, maybe 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off, do that through a few cycles. That evening, I would prop pillows to keep your head elevated at night to allow the swelling to come down from your face. Then we talked about Arnica and bromelain prepping you before for the injection. After the injection, you also wanna continue the Arnica and bromelain. Even if you might not see any visible bruising, because bruising can show up 24 to 48 hours after the injection. If you do see bruising and swelling, then I would even extend it until the bruising and swelling is gone. So that's what I would do with Arnica and bromelain. After a Botox injection, and if you've been to a consultation with me about Botox, you wanna avoid laying down for the first four hours after the injection. So laying flat is, is a no-no because the Botox can go to other areas that we don't want. So that's the important key on that one. And then last here, last two things that I'm gonna address is makeup. So you wanna avoid applying makeup right after the injection because all of the spots that we've injected, particularly with the filler injections, those holes are a little bit bigger. And if you cake makeup on, you will trap bacteria into the hole itself that was just um, injected in those injection spots. And if your makeup, you use the same brush over and over again, well, you will collect bacteria on the surface of those brushes. Some people, clean their brushes regularly and that's a great thing, but if you're do not doing that and you're in a rush, you don't wanna use that same makeup brush to apply the makeup over those injection spots. Last but not least, this is uh, emphasizing for lip filler injections. This is a very popular injection in my office. And after lip filler injections, um, one of the things you want to avoid is smacking your lips, using your, moving your lips aggressively, um, avoid uh, moving the lips in. So I, I would avoid uh, take use of straws. I would also stick to cold liquids instead of warm or hot and then apply uh, lip balm. That's okay, but don't apply lipstick right over the, the area that was recently injected. And there you have it. Hopefully this was a very informational video for you. If you have questions after watching this video and you'd like to send them to us, feel free to put the comments in our YouTube channel. If this is somewhere else that you're watching it, feel free to send us a message and we'll be happy to answer your questions for you. Thank you for tuning in. For more informational videos, please tune in to our YouTube channel at Faces by DRT1. We are also on Instagram at Faces by our DRT, and that's the same handle that you can find us at on most of our social media channels. Thank you.